Okay, let's talk about the Indiana Core Middle School Math Assessment. So this is the assessment or certification exam or test, whatever you want to call it, to uh, get your certification to teach middle school math in the state of Indiana. So um, if you're watching this video, I assume that you are um, either one, very bored, <laughs> or two, you're actually studying for this exam. So a little bit about myself. My name is John. I am a middle and high school math teacher. So definitely know what it's like to take certification exams. Although I haven't taken the Indiana exam, I actually took the Praxis exam, which is used by many states. Um, it's still, uh, uh, you know, pretty much these certification exams are pretty similar. Um, there, there can be some differences, but for the most part, uh, when it comes to teaching middle school math, you need to know a considerable amount of mathematics to do well on the certification exam. So even myself, you know, I have a degree in mathematics and a master's degree. You, I had to study you know, to do well on the praxis exams to be able to teach high school level math. So even though you're going to be teaching middle school, you really have to take a look at what's on this uh, assessment. Um, it's a pretty considerable amount of advanced high school level mathematics. I think that's a kind of pretty good classification um, to kind of think about the math that you're going to really want to um, study up on to do well. Now, before we get going, what I have here is a kind of a pop quiz for you, but I want to let you know that I have a full comprehensive test prep course. I think you'll really uh, like that, but I'm going to go ahead and leave the link to that course in the description of the video. So if that's something you want to check out, that's where you can find it. But with that being said, I got, your, uh, got a nice little problem here. Something that you definitely should be able to handle um, or be expected to be able to do uh, to do well on the Indiana Core Middle School Math Assessment. So I'm going to, of course, solve it, but I want to give you a chance, an opportunity to actually uh, solve it. So what I want you to do is to evaluate this here, okay? So that's a little i. It's i to the 29th power. So what is that equal to? Simplify that if you know how. Now, um, if you think you know how, I definitely encourage you to pause the video. Uh, as I go through the problem, at any point you think you can, you know, after I kind of start doing it, think you can actually solve it yourself, I encourage you to do that. But uh, with that being said, let's get to the problem. Okay, so what we're talking about here is imaginary numbers, right? So hopefully you know that much. We're talking about imaginary numbers. Quick review on imaginary numbers. So we have the real number system, right? The set of real numbers. And then we have the complex number system, which are made up of, uh, well, let's write it this way, a plus b i. There's a real component, and then there is an imaginary component, and this is a complex number, and the set of real numbers are inside this set of complex numbers. So um, hopefully that makes sense to you. Okay, now if you're totally lost at this point, then you definitely got some work to uh, uh, to do, to review, to learn, because complex numbers are, are really um, critical in advanced mathematics. Okay, now again, just because at the middle school level um, you may not be teaching, you're very likely are not going to be teaching about complex numbers. That's not the point of this particular problem. The point of this problem is to kind of measure your current understanding of the mathematics that you're going to be teaching, but uh, you're likely going to be teaching, very well could be teaching like Algebra 1 or maybe even Honors Geometry at the high school level, 8th grade level. That's uh, not uncommon at all. And even to teach Algebra 1, that's a con you know, good amount of, you know, that's pretty ad advanced. All right? Now, I don't want to say like, oh, Algebra 1, kind of think of it as kind of basic. But if you take a look at what we really do cover in an Algebra 1 level course, uh, it's, it's considerable. Okay, you're talking about, uh, you know, you start getting into concepts of complex numbers with the quadratic equation and type of roots, etc. But there's a lot to cover, which means you really have to be a master of this stuff. So anyways, um, not to go off on too much of a tangent, uh, everything I cover here, not only have I taught, uh, you know, in a classroom setting, stuff you absolutely are going to need to know. Okay, so back to the problem. So uh, without the aid of a calculator, obviously, um, and one other quick comment here, you probably should be able to uh, uh, do this with a calculator as well, at least know how to do that, even though I'm not sure if calculators are allowed on this particular assessment. I can't remember that. But that's not important. Let's get back to the problem. Okay, so i to the 29th power. How do we solve this problem? Or how do we simplify this problem without the aid of a calculator? Well, it's a good idea to know what the definition of i is, right? So an imaginary number, by definition, 1i or i is equal to the square root of negative 1. 
So we're going to want to know that, okay? Now what about i squared? So if I square i, and I have i squared, I'm going to square both sides, right? So that's going to leave me here with just negative 1. So with these two pieces of information, we can solve this problem. But we're going to have to use our uh, skills and knowledge with powers and exponents to rewrite this i to the 29th power. So let me sh kind of show you uh, what I'm going to do here. And then if you think you can kind of figure it out any one time, go to pause the video and, and figure it out. So how can I write i to the 29th power? Well, I could break it up this way. Let's think of this as, here, let me write that a little bit neater, i to the 28th power times i to the first power, or just i. Okay, so let's do it this way. So i to the 28th power times i to the first power. If you have the same bases and we're multiplying, remember, all we do is add the exponents. Okay, so this here, i to the 28th times i to the first is equivalent to i to the 29th. Okay, so if I can figure this out, then I got, I got, I can figure out what i to the 29th is. So we're like, oh, okay, maybe you kind of see where I'm going. Well, the key is, how do we figure out this i to the 28th? Now, the key, we don't want to multiply i by itself 28 times or 28 times. That's that's just too long, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to go, okay, i to the 28th is the same thing as i squared to the 14th power times i to the first is i to the 29th. Remember this property here, x squared, for example, to the uh, that x squared to the third power is the same thing as x to the sixth. So we just multiply the outer exponent times this inner exponent, and this is equivalent. I can write this as a general rule, a to the m to the n is equal to a to the m times n, okay? So you can see here, i to the 28th is the same thing as i squared times um, all that taken to the 14th power. Now why did I choose i squared? Well, obviously I know the value of i squared over here. Okay, it's negative 1. So now I can just substitute i squared is the same thing as negative 1 to the 14th power times i. That is equal to i to the 29th. So, oh, okay, now this is getting someplace. So now what is i, or negative, I'm sorry, now that I substitute this negative 1 for i squared, what is negative 1 to the 14th power? Well, let's just look at the pattern here. Negative 1 times negative 1 is a positive 1. Okay, so let's take a look at negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1. This is a negative 1. So you can just can continue down here. I can have 4 negative 1s, 5 negative 1s, but if you can just kind of see here, any times negative 1, we multiply it by itself by an even time, I'm going to end up with a positive 1. Okay, here it's 3 times, I'm going to end up with a negative 1. So negative 1 to an even power, and here's kind of the rule, negative 1 to the even power will end up being a positive 1. So this is just going to be 1 times i, or just a positive i, or just i itself. So um, hopefully that makes sense to you. And if you're like, oh, okay, I get, I, I, I can understand this, then that's excellent, okay? Now, again, this is by no means indicative of all the math that you're going to be expected to know for the Indiana Core Middle School Math Assessment. Um, there's a lot, there's a lot to cover, okay? And I think, um, I think they have it right uh, in terms of different you know, what it takes to be a math teacher, especially at the high school level, you really do need to almost have like a degree in mathematics because you've got to have a real command of of the knowledge that you're teaching, okay? So it's a lot of math to be covered at the high school level. And likewise, at the middle school level, you're really going to have to be a master of high school level math because that's what you're really getting your students ready for, getting them ready for high school level math, or you're going to be teaching high school level math, math courses in middle school. And I think likewise, we kind of just continue this you know, concept down to elementary level. Elementary school teachers really have to be a master of middle school math and, you know, even uh, some high school math. Okay, so hopefully uh, you found this helpful, but let's go and wrap up this video. Again, if you want to check out my full test prep course, I think you'll really like what you'll see. I'm going to leave the link in the description of this video, so that's where you can find that course. I've been on YouTube for like 12 plus years. I literally got hundreds and hundreds of uh, videos that can help you out. So hopefully you can uh, um, consider subscribing to my channel. If you enjoyed the video, definitely appreciate a thumbs up and leave me some feedback. Um, what's your background? Why are you um, 
focused in on math, you're probably like myself, you probably like math, uh, do you have, actually have a, a, a particular math degree or maybe an engineering background or a science background? Many uh, uh, middle school math teachers, you know, and just teachers in general have pretty impressive uh, backgrounds. So I'd be curious to know what yours is and do you intend maybe to uh, teach high school math, okay? Um, myself, what I did, I started in high school level mathematics, which I love to teach, but I wanted to have a different experience. So I went to um, middle school mathematics, which is a completely different uh, deal <laughs> all itself. So I really got the full range. When you're teaching a sixth grader, sixth grade math, that's a whole different deal than teaching someone who's in 12th grade, taking an AP college, uh, AP uh, calculus course or stats or pre-calculus. Okay, so it's a whole spectrum. Uh, but these principles of, of teaching, classroom management, stressing good academic skills, you know, that will come with experience. So, you know, I do want to say one other thing, uh, and I always kind of do this in my uh, videos to teachers, is that if you're really struggling on this particular certification exam, that's quite normal. Okay, a lot of teachers have to take certification exams more than once. So if you are maybe taking this again, second time or third time, don't feel bad. Okay, these uh, tests are generally not easy as they should not be because, you know, you're really talking about, a, uh, you know, this is a professional exam. Okay, you're going to be getting up in front of us uh, students teaching. A lot of responsibility goes with that. So work hard, study hard. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best. Thank you for your time. And have a great day.